Uh, welcome, everyone, to another episode of School Zoned, uh, the podcast that brings you everything education here in Oklahoma. Uh, our special guest today is uh, House Representative um, Jacob Rosecrans, um, representing District 56, 46? 46. 46 out of Norman, um, that Norman area. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, give a big welcome to Jacob Rosecrans. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Jacob, welcome. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get on this road to being where you are today? Absolutely. I'd be happy to share. First of all, I got to make sure you know, it's the west side of Norman and Noble. Can't skip out uh, Noble. Yeah. It's a full city that I have in my district too. Nice. So, um, so holla Noble. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so let me tell you kind of how this all happened. Um, Back in, we're not going to go all the way back, but back in high school, my teachers kind of uh, reached me. They were sure. able to kind of figure me out. Sure. Uh, I was not the best student yeah. at all. Uh, you know, maybe I was a little too creative, I'd talk a lot, those type of things. Um, but they were able to sit me down and reach me at my level, yeah. and it made me want to be a teacher. Nice. So, you know, throughout life, I kind of my number one goal, and this is before you know a big teacher, uh, you know, shortage. I, I couldn't find a job. I, I was, uh, I had a kid in college, so I decided to go the alternative education yep. route. Um, and and I was a history major, so nice. I wanted to teach history and social Same. studies. Good. And uh, finally found a job, and that was uh, the south side of Oklahoma City in 2012 at Roosevelt Middle School. Yeah. And, well, I'll tell you what. You're going <laughs> to learn that day. You're going to learn. <laughs> I learned in a couple of days. I was like, teaching's a little bit difficult. You know, I, I had a feeling it was, but I didn't know it was going to be exactly right. like that. But, um, and I didn't have that, you know, that background from, from being at one of the education colleges. So mm -hmm. I had to kind of learn on the job. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a lot of washout at that time. And this was right during um, when Common Core was becoming a thing. Okay. Yep. And uh, I, I really fought against that. I didn't like the idea of you know putting some kids that I had that couldn't even speak English, mm -hmm. um, trying to standardize tests and, yeah. and put them in these little standards. So I rebelled against that. That's what got me involved in politics. Oh, okay. um, I became kind of a you know I became what's called um, a, a badass teacher. That's actually kind of a, a group, a little Facebook group that yeah. of teachers that just had had it with sure. uh, with Common Core and yeah. all the testing and. Boom. So uh, it, it went from that and teaching. You know, I taught at, at Roosevelt, and I also taught at U.S. Grant. Um, I taught at Oklahoma Centennial. And these are some tough schools mm -hmm. to teach at. Yep. And each place, though, I had really uh, a lot of success with the children yep. because I could, I could you know, create a rapport. Yep. And I had the time and the wherewithal to do that. As everything kind of got more and more test-based and test-related, I kept rebelling even more. I probably got called into the um, <laughs> principal's office more than my own students did, sure. you know? And uh, so that's when I decided to run for office. Um, in 2016, uh, I ran against the incumbent, Scott Martin, who was pro-public yeah. education as well. Um, he was the incumbent of the uh, uh, House District 46. I didn't run against him for you know personal reasons. I ran against him because I knew he was going to term out in 2018. Okay. Um, 2016, I lost, okay. but I got a respectable 40. percent hey, That's not bad. It was yeah. it was uh, it was it was a big deal. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, and all yeah. the lessons <laughs> that you learned. I mean, oh just, no no. Oh, yeah. I tell people all the time. I'm like that year is what. Uh, set up the success for everything else. Right. And he resigned after he beat me too to take over the Norman Chamber of Commerce. Oh, so okay. it, it was like teed up, yeah. boom, because I knocked a ton of doors and spoke to a ton of people. The number one um, issue, pol political issue down in Norman, Oklahoma, and Noble is education. Mm -hmm. So it was boom, hit it out of the park. Yeah. Um, I am a Democrat, not that I look at party, but I was the first Democrat elected out there since 1995 when I was in oh. middle school. So nice. And the reason why, it wasn't because I ran up to the door and was like, hi, I'm Democrat running for <laughs> right. office. I'm an angry father and teacher. Right. I would like to represent you guys and, and get this voice up there where it needed to be. Yeah. And that's what I did. And then, you know, you get in there. It's a $1.3 billion budget hole. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I can do this. This is easy. No. Um, and then 2017, of course, the walkout. Yep. Um, it was historical. I'll never yep. forget that. But think about everything I've learned along the way. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the whole point. I mean, I've, I also tried to... to passed some legislation that I found common sense, uh, the number one being what's called Lauren's Law. It brings consent and healthy relationship education to our students. And okay. I got that from uh, a student who was sexually assaulted down in Norman, yeah. and uh, the guy admitted it, but it told told her that he didn't know what consent meant. And so I was like, well, we probably need to, to yeah. take that. And this thing, I ran it for two years, and it got real close uh, to actually passing. But unfortunately, last year, over some ig ignorance at the Capitol, <laughs> to say the least, sure. um, it, it died on the floor. So I'm not going to run that again. Now I'm kind of uh, you know turning my attention to to 
not only issues with the constituents, but what's in my heart as well, which is play-based, uh, the play-based learning initiative. So nice. that was a lot of talk. Oh, that's good. I talk a lot. <laughs> that's good, Jacob. And I even had coffee You're, today. So uh, nice. You're a per- perfect guest on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we like people that take the initiative of, of talking and, and telling us what, what's on their mind. I somehow got the yeah. whole history of everything into that little <laughs> period of time. That's so. pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so yeah, so talk about this play-based initiative. Like where yeah. where did this stem from? Uh, crazy enough, um, I had always kind of uh, – my, my children, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, Norman does a really good job of the balance between play and technology, I think. Um, I don't know if every district does that, but even so, my children loved learning before they got to school. Sure. Sure. And didn't love it so much after they got to school. Right. This had nothing to do with the teachers. Right. I think it had, at least I, my opinion and what I decided to look into, was the system, the, mm-hmm. the education system. Outcome-based, you know, what uh, what <laughs> rigor for rigor's sake. Um, right. I understand the point of view is to try to, to make uh, our, our children civic-minded and, and, and well-trained to, to work at you know, 21st century jobs, right. but wh- how far do you go on that? Right. And also, um, you know, is it becoming developmentally inappropriate? Sure. Uh, what's going on down at the early childhood right. education levels? Mm-hmm. And as I started getting involved in that, um, I, I just looked up play-based stuff and I found a video from uh, Representative Victoria Sullivan out in New Hampshire. Okay. And she's not a representative anymore, but she was in 2018. And she passed something called the Play-Based Learning Standards. Okay. Um, it took a while to get a hold of her because, you know, it's a different state. Mm-hmm. Um, but she contacted me, and she told me all about it, um, how it obviously is massively uh, scientific, proven right. that this is the best way kids learn right. still, and it is becoming uh, extinct. Yeah. And so um, I took that idea from her, and I created a work group of about 60 uh, people and this included educators, nice. uh, mostly from the Norman area, but also around the state too, okay. all the way from out to Hinton and stuff wow, like that. Because nice. I wanted some rural voices as well. Absolutely. And um, and departments, like even chairs of the departments of uh, early childhood education, and that was at uh, UCO, OU, OCU, and Northeastern, I believe, and nice. some other schools too. Yeah. And um, it kind of just started out as kind of you know this is our idea let's throw this out here let's see what we can do mm-hmm. and then we created a date uh, this this all sounds like it's very easy it was not very easy right, just getting people on the same yeah. page um, and I'd never done anything like this before usually I run my own bills I just kind of run my own bills mm-hmm. I don't get all this feedback mm-hmm. and, and try to figure out um, but uh, we got the the work group set for I believe it was the OU Kansas State game day which. Hey, we didn't miss anything that day, right? They definitely <laughs> lost. Right. Uh, but that's when we hammered out the language uh, based upon what Victoria Sullivan did out in New Hampshire mm-hmm. and um, made it our own version. Um, and uh, we had we split up the groups uh, of into, into educators, yep. rural, and... and uh, um, um, uh, what's the other, the opposite of rural? Urban. Urban. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Where I taught the whole time. You got it. Gosh. Uh, and, and also uh, higher education. Also some parents showed up. Um, we had uh, representatives from State Department of Education as well. That's when we knew this was kind of a big deal because if they were going to be on board with us, then this would have a chance, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So um, it was nice to see them there. They presented, I presented, and then we basically just started hammering things out. It took about four or five hours. Um, and, you know, some issues that came were, up. I were you guys like trying up. to do like standards for play base or were you just trying to do, um, you know, some best practices? Like what was the, what was the work on, on that? That's a great question. And, and we brought that up. First of all, it was called the play-based learning standards. Okay. Uh, um, that's what it was called. Mm-hmm. Um, as we started breaking things down, we realized that that's kind of what we were going against. Like we didn't mm-hmm. want it to be standardized. More standards, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how are you going to quantify you know, those types of things. Right. Um, so that's when we turned it. Um, we had different names. We had to vote on it because mm-hmm. I made this totally democracy, you know, oh, nice. different groups. They yeah. split up and then they voted on everything. And, and we voted on, we were, we were about to actually uh, get rid of the word play. And the reason being, and you'll see this if you go to, to our, um, our Facebook page, um, the Oklahoma Play-Based Learning Initiative. It's one of the things I popped up there first, uh, kind of announcement is that play is not outdoor. Play is not recess. We're not right. looking to do that. Right. This is play-based learning within the classroom. Okay. Um, and that's still our biggest issue, sure. is, is especially at the Capitol where I'm educating people like, oh, I totally think it, more right. recess is important. I'm right. like, well, I do too, but that's right. not what this is. Right. <laughs> so, um, and we knew that was going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. So we were going to take it out, but because of how important it is, there's no other word for it. Right. It is play-based learning. Yeah. It, it is It is using your hands. It is... 
you know, hands on doing things again that we don't see so much because of the rise of technology right. in our early childhood education. So um, as we came to the end of that, we got our language. There was different versions. I had each group turn in a version of what they wanted to see. Mm -hmm. And then I connected everything and put some, uh, put my staff on it and got some legalese going on. Um, one of the biggest pieces in our play-based learning initiative, now that what it's called, mm -hmm. um, was professional development for not only teachers who have forgotten how to teach by, by a play, right. hands on, it's sad, but it's right. true, but also f extremely important. And we can talk about this even more um, for our administrators, for administrator buy-in. Right. Uh, if they're that's not support. on board, mm -hmm. they're not going to be all about this. Right. And uh, so that was our biggest issues. And that's what we wanted to make sure that there was PD, uh, professional development, I'm sorry, yep. um, for for uh, not only early childhood educators, but also for the um, the administrators. Yeah, would the, would the target of this play-based initiative, would that be you know, pre-K through first or just pre-K and kinder? Like, how did how'd you guys see that shaping out? It's a great question, too. Um, again, that did come up as well because in, in New Hampshire, uh, they did kindergarten only. Oh, okay. Um, and so what we would like to see, we left it kind of broad. Mm -hmm. Early childhood education, uh, it, it encompasses pre-K to third. Right. We would love to see that. That's our goal. That's yeah. what we're fighting for. Yeah. Um, if we have pushback, it's probably going to be that. Um, and so, but we're, we're going to, Keep fighting for that particular age group because that's what we think is most important. Nice, um, and and so we'll see. I mean, it's it's gotten so much support. I have a few uh, people who have asked some questions like, "How are you going to quantify play in the standards?" That shows you how far we've gone with this right. standardization. You're not going to quantify play. Right. Um, I've had a few people ask me, are you going to add play to the existing standards, the academic standards? Mm -hmm. I was like, well, no, if I did that, then you'd be quantifying play again. Right. This is just to work in concert with the uh, existing academic standards. Nice. Yeah. Um, so what's like, what's the end game of the, of the play-based initiative? Like... What it's a great are, question too. Yeah, what, um, what to the end game is first of all to pass this sure. this year because it's an initiative. It's the first part. Right. Um, believe it or not, the next part I'd like to see is is more recess. Mm -hmm. um, other states have actually mandated that. It's just right. a pushback against all the sitting down yep. and and looking into a screen, screen time, yeah. screen time mm -hmm. all that stuff. These kids already do that plenty outside of their own homes, right. um, outside of school, right. in their own homes. I want to see a balance. I'm not saying let's get rid of it all. Um, sure. We had iPads when I was teaching at um, at uh, Roosevelt, and we didn't have iPads when I was teaching at Roosevelt. Yeah. And once you find the balance, it works right. really, really well. Absolutely. If you don't have a balance, I'm sorry, you're going to miss wide swaths of children and their learning styles. Yep. And so that's kind of where I came from with this. And um, I'll tell you, it, it is, it is uh, that's the first step. So then, yeah, re after that... Um, Heck, man, I'd like to see the end of just testing in general to when it comes from not from the teacher sure. or not from the kids, right. um, the, the people that are in the school itself. Right. That's a big initiative. That's a big, big, right. big push. That's Very federal well. even. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're going to vote for a president, try to find one that's going to end the standardized testing would yep. be a great first step. But I don't want to get political. But I'm just saying that's that's how it's going to have to happen. Yep. It's going to have to come. Um, but this is my way of saying, you know, in the state level, let's try to do something to, to battle back against this. Kids, I think these days, talk, talk to them. Go talk to a fifth grader and, and be like, hey, what's how, what's your favorite thing to learn? And they're like, oh, we had to study for this test, study for that test. And right. I'm like, Yeeks, that's, boy. It's still going to be PE. It's yeah. Still, they they, they, they yeah. love PE all day. All day. Yeah. And so, and that's recess. another thing, the, another big piece, it would be that recess piece. And I, I most likely will be doing um, an interim study mm -hmm. after this session to uh, take some data from the State Department of Education. They've done a pilot pilot out in Chattanooga, Oklahoma, with more recess to see if that would lead to, you know, all kinds of data, right. but also less, you know, behavior issues in class, right. those types of things. That's, the, I would say, the next piece. Huh. But ultimately, I want to see a balance between what we've got going on technology-wise mm -hmm. and hands-on learning, STEAM, STEM, those types of things. Nice. Okay. Um, as you're moving throughout this initiative, like, what feedback are you getting? What kind of support are you getting? Well, first of all, educators, I, I wasn't quite sure how they were going to react. Is this another mandate? Right. Um, am I going to be tested upon right. this? Some some have been that way. And I was trying to say, no, that's, this is not a gotcha. Right. This is this is hopefully to empower you to teach the way you know best. Um, our biggest shortage in the in the teacher um, uh, shortage 
era, if you want to call mm-hmm. it that, is uh, in early childhood education. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's because they know that they can't teach the way they were trained to teach and sure. the way they know is the best way to teach. Yep. Um, and, and that's a huge deal because this is the most formative years of these children's lives. Absolutely. So uh, a dual piece of this would be, you know, not only to empower these teachers, but also to hopefully say, hey, teachers who left, um, we're putting a refocus on play-based hands-on learning. Yep. Why don't you come on back and give us another shot? Yeah, you know, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Um, so, uh, I guess when does this initiative come up for a vote? Like, mm-hmm. what's what's the timeline on this thing? Yeah, so um, I've learned so much at the house since 2017. Uh, it's, I think, experience is the best teacher, mm-hmm. and everybody hears me say that all the time. So I'm gonna keep on saying it. Sure. Um, and so advocacy is actually a tricky thing. Um, you don't want to go too early. You don't want to go too late. You want to know when things are up for votes, like what you said. Mm -hmm. You want to know when they're going to committees. And nobody really knows that unless you're involved uh, to the level that we are. So part of my job, honestly, through the uh, Facebook page, through the um, Twitter and and the Instagram, is to make sure people understand our next steps. And our next step is going to be once this bill, uh, which is House Bill 2794, House Bill 2794, um, that's the important part. It's the name of it's the number of the bill. Um, it'll get a hearing in one of the committees it gets assigned to. Okay. Obviously, it's an education bill. Right. Probably will go to the education committee. Right. I'm on that committee. Um, I've talked to the chair of the committee. Perfect. Prepared people for that. Yep. Um, and and so should pass pretty easily through there. I'm not going to just count my sure. chickens for their hash, right. but and then and then the big challenge is to get it on the floor for right. a vote. And so once it passes through committee, if there's no changes or anything like that, it mm-hmm. goes to the floor. And that's where the big challenge will be. That's when the advocacy will will be so important. And excuse me, what we're trying to do is make sure and empower people to talk to their own reps and senators. Nice. Uh, and some some yeah. some people don't know, right. man. The ones I've talked yeah. to already here, they're like, oh, it's it's uh, it's. Uh, Lankford. I'm like, okay, well, that's United States. Right. United <laughs> States. Okay. Uh, how about your state? Oh, about the local stuff. No, that's that's really, yeah, I was like, so that's, that's not it. That's not it. And of course, you know, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just like, this is important right. to, for you to get to know your state representative yeah. and your state center for any kind of advocacy, but especially for this yeah. bill. So that's the next big step. Do you think after it goes to the committee, like they'll suggest that you have some sort of either funding tied to it or is it some sort of mandate or something like that? There's a possibility that they could say that the professional development piece may cost something. Mm-hmm. Um, our argument is the fact that these programs already exist at okay. the State Department of Education because they were part of our mm-hmm. work group and they told us that they do. Yeah. Um, we'll see then, okay. obviously. But yeah, if there's any kind of cost involved in this, um, it makes it so much more difficult. Right. We're going to have a flat budget. Everybody knows right. that. Um, I think the governor has said no more than 12 to 14 million dollars in new monies mm-hmm. for education right. that's that's not very that's much not much at all yeah. so we had to think really outside the box and yeah. so uh, uh it, it's a possibility it could happen we'll see when it gets uh kind of the fiscal impact gets scored yeah. um if state department of education does have a cost involved uh, we'll see from there and then kind of play from that but yeah. it's a possibility um but we're we're ready for just about anything this yeah. this has been my number one goal since it came to my brain, and I'm running other bills too, which are yeah. very important. But this this is the number one yeah. that I, I want to see done. So. How many uh, how many former teachers are in that uh, House of Representatives now? I know there's a big wave after that walkout. Yeah. Um, there were a few scattered in there before. Yeah. Um, how many of you guys are there? I think, wow, but I think that's, that's I think that's the Senate too. And the crazy thing is, it's not just Democrats like everybody right. seems to think. Oh, yeah. It's mixed. If yeah. more if if anything, it's it's more Republicans than Democrats. Yeah. Um, that happened after uh, the teacher walkout. Mm -hmm. Um, During the primary there, anybody who voted against that, which they were Republicans, Mm -hmm. let's just be honest, um, they got booted out and they got replaced by more moderate, uh, even teachers. And um, so it was really neat to see the House, I think, has gone a little more moderate when it comes to education uh, issues. Which is great to see, yeah. um, and you could see it in even in the conversations we have in our little uh, you know committee meetings stuff like that. It's very amicable. It's nice to know that when I say something that makes sense to a teacher, that there's going to be somebody else there. Right. It was just me, Representative Dollins, uh, Representative Baker, and I. I think that oh, I'm probably missing somebody who was a former educator. I think represent or Senator Sharp before 2018. And now we've got 22. Yep. So it's it's great to see. Shout out Kelly Albright. Representing yeah, Midwest Kelly City. Albright. She's one of the best. Yep. Yeah, yep. good. Um, so what else is happening down the street at the, at the Capitol this 2020 session? Just now we had our appropriations and budget hearing for libraries and uh, OETA. 
Um, it, they're, they're every all the agencies are asking for more money because they were cut so much yeah. in the last twelve years, yeah. um, and so we're taking into account what they're asking for and mm-hmm. what they're going to be spending it on, and it's just eye opening how much. First of all, the libraries do for our communities. Oh, yeah. I have no they're idea huge. that some of the things they do. Yeah. They're even working on degree programs for for people who yeah. like older people who don't have a degree. Right. That's huge. Yeah. So, and that costs money. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's certain programs like that, but also, I mean, if you're going to talk about like, what are the big ticket issues at the Capitol? Um, I'd say healthcare is going to be the number one issue. Like you wouldn't like just believe. expanding Medicaid or what? Yes. That, um, since we saw it with the initiative petition and there was what the most signatures ever for anything like that, that's, that's a lot. That that almost says, hey, there's a mandate here. Right. Um, they haven't decided if it's going to be during the primary, if it's going to be in November when that comes up for a vote. They're going to mm-hmm. have to decide that at one point. Um, but what I've heard is that perhaps the governor may have his own plan mm-hmm. and, and try to push that through legislation and see where that goes. Okay. And, that, and that may not happen. That's yeah. just kind of what I've heard. Yeah. I think it's going to be a big fight. Um, I think that uh, cost of living allowance for our state retirees mm-hmm. is going to be a big deal as well. Um, that's because they haven't had a raise and it, it's called a COLA. They haven't had a raise in 10, 10 years or something like that. Mm. And you're talking about people who rely on that. Right. And so we're looking at the house passed a 4% last year. Senate did not pass anything. So it's going to be kind of a little battle there, yep. probably a little give and take yep. and, and we'll see what's there. Um, Beyond those, I mean, issues still remain strong in education. I think I've already seen 84 bills that are going to wow. be up um, between last uh, year and this year, which is yep. the same session. People yep. don't know that. It's just yep. a continuation. Yep. Um, I've got a bill. This is this is a big deal, too. Um, House Bill 1009, it passed the education uh, appropriates and budget last year, um, and it's on the full A and B uh, schedule. And what that does, it brings mm. back a $5,000 stipend for any National Board certified teacher who yeah. still teaches in a classroom. Big, yep. It's huge. Big time. And um, I've been told that that actually has been uh, something the governor wants to do. Oh, nice. So um, I can't guarantee it's going to be, uh, you know, my name on the bill. Right. <laughs> so, it's the world we live in. Yeah. But um, I have been the mastermind. I've ran that bill since I got elected. So, nice. and, I'll, and I'll be shepherding it through no matter what it looks like. <laughs> and especially if it doesn't look to where I need it to look, mm-hmm. well, then, and then I'll fight against it because I need it to, I need people to realize that to, to even just become a national board certified teacher, that is very difficult That's to do. That's huge, yeah. That's already task. a big, mm-hmm. huge hoop. And mm-hmm. so I don't want to see kind of others uh, add unnecessary hoops, which we're kind of seeing. So um, we'll see what happens with that. I don't have a bill number that that might be, um, but mine exists that's still already out there. Um, Gosh, you're going to see little things like that. That's not a little thing because the whole point behind that is to keep our best and brightest in our schools who... Those are, man, yep. I'm telling you, I couldn't yep. even make it through the National Board Certified yeah. Teaching oh, it's, Program. It's like a second <laughs> master's. I mean, it's it ridiculous. Is, yeah. It is. And you come out on the other side, at, I think, a better, uh, you know, not better teacher in general, but just you you know oh, yeah. what's going on. Yeah. A little it's bit a better. really big uh, reflective process. Yes. But yeah, if, if you're going to take that $5,000 away, I mean, there's no incentive to, to do it or to even stay here. Yeah. So. Well, we saw we saw the numbers back. It was five. It's a rest- restoration. It, right. it was $5,000 back. They dropped it to a thousand or twelve hundred. I can't remember. It's but the program itself is like almost flatlined. Yep. It used to be yep. number two in the nation. I yep. think that just goes to show you investment's mm-hmm. important sometimes, yep. or a lot of times. Yep. But uh, like I said, the uh, the governor's folks have said that's something they do want to look into, which okay. is a great. That's a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm a statesman, so again, if it's not my name as the author, just know I'm gonna be working. If it's something I agree with, I'll be working hard to get it passed. So, um. Mm, boy, I tell you. Um, Coming up for re-election? Yes, that's another thing all of us yeah. are. Uh, you know, it, it's every two years, so 2020 mm-hmm. is election year for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have an opponent already. He hasn't filed any paperwork, but it was one of the uh, three people who ran in a primary in 2018, so okay. I know her, and she's okay. she's cool. I, I just don't know what direction she's going to go in. Okay. I, I, I always prepare for the worst. Sure. So I'll be, you know, doing fundraising, whatever else in this interim time to yeah. make sure whoever does pop out knows that I'm not playing around, right. knows that I have a big, big, big job to do here at the Capitol and I don't want it to end anytime soon. Yeah. So especially for our, our, uh, our schools and our children to go to our schools. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's, uh, um, if, uh, if you have, any other questions? Um, I have a couple other bills that I have. That are... Hit it, man. What's yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, this is the funny thing. As we were told it was going to be a flat budget, I decided to look at other states who have allowed school bus ads okay. on their school buses. 
Um, like 12 other states do it. And uh, uh, so I went ahead and wrote a bill that um, is going to allow school boards to do so. That's it. Doesn't cost any money. It just allows them to do so. A lot of people thought they already could, and they can't. Huh. So this allows them to do that. I've had a little bit of pushback from some some groups who don't want ads on their obviously front of sure, their children's of eyes yeah. and public safety issues. But we've we've been very very restrictive uh, based upon the way we wrote this. Um, obviously, what ads can go on there, right. those type of things. Yeah. And we're going to leave it to the locals uh, as to what that's going to look like too. That way. You know, if it's some business out here, maybe that's not going to work. You'll so wait a, minute, a school district right now cannot allow... Uh, not on their buses. Pete's Burgers. Nope. To put a, a billboard up that's on right. their... Hmm. Yeah, Interesting. And, and it wouldn't be a billboard either. That's another thing we have to educate people. It's going to be a, above the window okay. or below the window, like a certain amount of feet. Okay. And um, also, uh, it, it, it just can't be... It can't be wrapped. There's no wrapping around. It can't... They just don't want to do that, so... And they can advertise inside of a gym and stuff like that, yeah. but they can't... Yeah. My awesome. big my big argument as to passing this is, first of all, it doesn't cost a dime. Right. Second of all, it's going to raise revenue. I'm sorry. Yeah. And you're helping small businesses in your communities. Right. Lots of different things you can do right. here. Um, but also, uh, yeah, it's already on baseball fields. Mm-hmm. Uh, look at the Thunder. They have a big old loves patch uh-huh. now. Yes, is it corporate, you know, kind of, you know, working together with the, with the public? Yeah. But hey, again, if I can't... Private and public dollars working together for the kids? I mean... Yeah. yeah. And if I can't raise a bunch of revenue, right. uh, which I'm not able to do uh, for our schools, then this is one creative way to do it. Um, Another thing I'm doing, we kind of saw some uh, through the Oklahoma political action community. They did a survey of parents around the state. Mm -hmm. What's most important? School safety came up a bunch. And so I went and talked to our uh, Norman police department Mm -hmm. and uh, talked to the guy who's in charge of the, uh, the, um, the SRO program. Okay. And he said the majority of the calls they get with the kids at these schools is mental health related, Mm -hmm. like 85%. Um, and so I was like, well, do you guys have training on, to handle those things? And they don't. Yep. So my bill is going to, and it may cost some money, but right now it doesn't because we think that the programs exist at a uh, mental health department okay. to provide all SROs or any security guard or whoever else is yep. SRO charged is with school resource kids. officer. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, Great, I get jargony. Go ahead, don't worry about it. <laughs> school resource officer. Um, <laughs> That training for trauma-informed and mental health training. Um, again, that's probably going to be a pretty popular bill, and if I have to, to do what i got to do to get that passed, yeah. then I'll do that. But um, So these are common sense ideas that I've come up with just by listening to my constituency, right. um, statewide constituencies, rural yeah. areas. I mean, I've got Noble. I know it's not classified as rural, but the, the, the surrounding area is 100% right. rural, Absolutely. and those are the ones that those people, those citizens go to our school. So. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I mean, I've got, uh, you know, other things planned here. Um, oh, yeah, something that's a no-brainer that is turning out to be difficult. Um, I want to make sure that school supplies are added with the uh, August tax holiday. Mm. Oh, wait, I thought that was a no-brainer, right. too. Right now, it's just clothes. It's just clothes, clothes and shoes, yes. under, uh, under uh, $100. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so here I, I went ahead and looked at other states again, um, Alabama, Florida, namely, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I just created a list. Uh, I put in a little piece that said the State Board of Education has to approve it. You know, that way they can add things if they have to, that we have to relook at the bill. Um, and then, it, it, like, the, the, the cost of it was huge. And the reason why, and I didn't know this until I looked at it, um, there's a there's a, a part of the the previous bill the, the statute that says if you <laughs> this is crazy if any municipality loses money on this tax money because they rely on that for mm-hmm. that one weekend right. the state has to pay back an appropriation to those municipalities that, that makes the price tag high right. so this may not go anywhere but no brainer again yeah it adds school, school supplies, supplies. Right. Yeah, why not it's a yeah. weekend exactly yeah. <laughs> so again that's just one of those no brainers I was just like. And it's getting a little support, too. Um, I have uh, some senators looking at that. They want to see some research on it. and nice. So I'm working on that. That's pretty much what I've got going on. Again, in the education realm, there's other bills I've got, too. Sure. I'm not just that. I have a bill for um, uh, recognizing um, Veterans uh, Suicide Awareness Week. Okay. Uh, that came from the constituents. What we popular. do, we listen to our constituents. Mm-hmm. Um, I've talked to the veterans who are at the, the House about that, and we'll yep. see what can go on with that. Yep. It's really important, I think, to... Uh, to there's not that existing already, Correct. and I thought there was. So again, it's one of those ones where, yeah, this this is something we need to put some eyeballs on. Yep. So it, it's not just all education for me, but uh, in the long run, honestly, this whole job is education right. still. Not just public education; it's yep. me educating these these other representatives and yep. senators who've been elected yep. about why this is important and why it should pass. Yeah. So. Especially for you to have that teacher voice on. I mean. Um, yeah, especially coming out of Norman, uh, a lot of people are going to be looking your ways to yeah. help represent them. Yeah. Uh, let's play lightning round real quick. Yeah, let's do it. 
Uh, Jacob Rosecrans, <laughs> representative. Hey, you pronounced my name right, too. Everybody gets it wrong. They say Rosencrantz, so I appreciate you. Oh, no. Yeah. There, 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 there's no end in there. <laughs> um, ready, Jacob. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Uh, Pepsi or Coke? Oh, Pepsi all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a beach or a mountains? Mountains. Uh, comedy or drama? Drama. Uh, elementary or secondary? So oh, I taught That's secondary, yeah. but I'm I'm looking into helping those elementary kids. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get the babies. Uh, pumpkin pie or sweet potato pie? Oh, it's tough. That is a tough one. Pumpkin pie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving or Christmas? Christmas still. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with all the kids. Yeah. Um, if you're going somewhere, are you driving or are you flying? Oh, driving. I planes freak me out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, last one. Who's your favorite teacher and why? Oh, well, okay, so I've got a whole bunch of teachers that have affected me during my life, but I'd say Claudia Swisher is the most affected to me because what grade? She, she, uh, she got me in ninth grade, okay. and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I thought I knew it all. Yeah. She taught uh, uh, literature, I believe, or English Lit, I believe is what yeah. it was called back then, at Central. Um, ah, man, she figured me out pretty quick. She was like, okay, you like to talk, and you have this big, <laughs> I, like, big ideas, and you don't like to listen either. And, now, and so she was able to sit me down, break things down. Just today, because we're still – she's my constituent now – She's one of the main reasons why I became a teacher and why I ran for office. Wow. So we're talking about somebody who's yeah. still in my life big time. Um, she also, she was at the uh, the Appropriations Budget Committee because she's, you know, libraries are important. And mm-hmm. um, she, <laughs> the chair, uh, uh, Mark McBride, I was talking. I hadn't seen my, my compadres in a while. So I was like, oh, yeah. And they were like, please silence. And he was like, he was like uh, Jacob, I know one of your teachers is in here. Um, I will have her take you out in the hallway. <laughs> I was like, oh, is it time to be quiet? And there she was. So um, it's kind of a funny joke, but uh, she's she's uh, now she's an amazing advocate, not only for National Board Certified Teachers, yeah. but um, education of our kids in general. Yeah. She loves the play-based idea. We are looking at not getting rid of the Reading Sufficiency Act, and they've been trying to fix that a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's another big, big, huge yep. goal. I would like to see that because my kids during third grade, they were horrified that they had yep. to take a test to read. They're yep. great readers. Yep. But they didn't like that. So yep. that's another big goal. I'm not trying to step on people's toes, but down the road, sure. kind of like to see the end of that too. But sure. um, not right now. It's good. It's good. <laughs> we, we, we love it. No, um, uh, but that's, uh, that's another piece that she's been a big proponent for as well. So yes. having her uh, is kind of an extension of an advocate yeah, right now absolutely. at the Capitol. So yeah. look at all the different things that she is still right. part of my life. And I've had some amazing teachers, yep. but she's continually there. And she even helps me knock doors and raises money for me. Come yeah. on, let's think. This, yeah. is, this, is, this is beyond <laughs> the normal stuff, right. you know? So plus reading for pleasure, that's what her big deal was. Okay. We've also lost that. Mm-hmm. You may see me start playing around with legislation to bring something like that back. I don't know if I have to legislate it, but uh, trying to get kids to love reading by love what they're reading, right. by loving what they're reading. Right. right now, it's kind of just like, you have to read, right. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is what you got to do yeah, yep. instead of just letting them choose and yep. just read what they want. So yeah. I like well, it. that's another big piece there. Jacob Rosecrans, thank you for uh, joining us today on School Zone. I uh, wish you all the best of luck with your initiative going forward. Yeah. Um, we will follow you uh, throughout the rest of the session. Um, people can find you on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, visit the uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll have that in the show notes for you guys. Yep. Um, but once again, Jacob, thank you for joining us. Absolutely.